for ortho in the ideal world, you should image before splint therapy in the ideal world. And NTIs are actually a bad, bad thing the vast majority of the time. We don't have enough time to get into that. Oh, come on. You open that can of worms, buddy, and it's Sunday. So <laughs> unless you got guitar lessons after this, I see your guitar in the back. I haven't touched that thing in five years. I'm too busy with this stuff. You okay, okay. Well, you, you got you got to uh, pontificate on NTI because it, it's pretty popular. I know it is. All right, an NTI basically separates your posterior teeth, right? All right. Proprioception. Remember the afferent response. Okay. Let me ask you a question real quick, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot. What are the functions of teeth? Most of us will say mastication and phonetics, right? That's fair. And if I say, okay, what else? And they really can't figure it out. Well, what if I told you teeth may be thought of as sensory organs? So these guys, my dentition, via trigeminal input or autonomic nervous system sympathetic input or periodontal ligament or what have you, there's proprioceptive and there's pain fibers, no susceptive things going up afferently to CNS. It's processed up here. And the efferent response is how the muscle comes out, right? So the NTI, basically, I believe, and I don't have, this is subjective, okay, what I'm about to tell you. I've never seen the paper, but I know it's true from what I see every day in practice. Every tooth is wired just a little bit differently. And once you hit premolar back, if you're engaging that too much in time, you're ramping up the muscles. When you're canine to canine on front teeth, on the anteriors, that basically shuts muscle down a bunch. And I see that routinely with EMG readings. So the NTI, how it's, how it's potentially bad, if you have torn cartilage either side, normal healthy cartilage, it's like a clock face. I can't show this in the podcast real well. Glenoid fossa, condyle, you've got discs sitting here, right? between condyle and condylar head. And this is anterior, and this is posterior. Well, in perfect health, my disc is gonna be at the one o'clock position when I'm fully seated, or an MIP, kind of. This gets confusing, okay? But the bottom line is, this is where cartilage should be. When it tears, it tears further forwards. If you're torn forwards, let's say to the 11 o'clock position, and you put an MTI in there, you're th potentially throwing things into more spasm and torquing things out. You're putting more strain on that already partially displaced disc and you can pop it further out. When you pop the disc all the way out, you cause inflammatory issues and all kinds of other types of problems that can cause some serious orthopedic problems in the joint, such as an OCD or an AVN. So in my world, I'm not saying I never use NTIs, but I never use an NTI until I've looked at the soft tissue with an MRI. And I know that most people are going to throw their arms up there and say, that's ridiculous. My patient pays $560 for an MRI. I don't think that's ridiculous. How much do they pay? $560. $560? Yep. Now, now, was NTI invented by Jim Boyd? Yep. Uh, uh, you, you, you ever talked to him about that? or? Nope. nope. No? Communication yet. Okay. Someday. 